A few weeks ago, I spoke with clinical psychologist Dr. Stephen Ragusia about prescription by addiction. Prescription drug abuse is our country's fastest growing drug problem. It can definitely have dramatic and even devastating effects on a person's lives. My next guest this morning, she knows firsthand just how powerful those effects can be. Sherry, thank you so much for being here with me this You're morning. You're welcome, Jenna, mm -hmm. and thank you so much for covering a topic that's near and dear to my heart. Well, I know that this is something that is really important to you, Sherry, and you have dealt with chronic pain for the past two years. Yes. What did that, what is it a result of? It's a result of an accident. Um, I've dealt with chronic neck pain, arm pain. I have uh, muscular neuropathy in my left arm. I have very little use of my left hand. Um, it, and er, the doctors just tried everything for me naturally. Mm -hmm. Chiropractic, um, electric, uh, the TENS unit, they mm -hmm. tried that kind of therapy with me. Everything that they've tried, nothing would work, so they started doling out the prescriptions. Mm -hmm. And what prescriptions were they putting you on, Sherry? Flexeril, Neurontin, and lots of Vicodin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It seems to be the drug du jour is Vicodin with yeah. these doctors. And, you know, I understand that they're trying what they can, and their hands are tied to what they have available. Also, what insurance companies will fill. Mm -hmm. That's another thing that I found. They'll go for the narcotics before they'll go for the non-narcotic pain, non -narcotic pain treatment, excuse me, I'm having a hard time too, <laughs> the non-narcotic pain treatment. Mm -hmm. So they just keep doling out the Vicodins, like it's candy, like it's mm -hmm. Pez dispenser is mm -hmm. what I call them, the Pez mm -hmm. dispensers. They absolutely are. And now, Sherry, you were taking the Vicodin and it got to a point though where you realized you needed to stop taking them. Yes. Um, it wasn't an addiction per se, it was more or less, it wasn't doing anything for me anymore. Mm -hmm. um, the feelings in my arm were one thing, they were still there, but it just diluted me. I was exhausted all the time, I wanted to sleep, or it was the other end of the spectrum where I couldn't cu stop cleaning the house. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just had to go, 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 and it altered my mood, altered my personality. I said, this isn't the choice that I want. Mm -hmm. So I went on non-narcotic pain relievers, mm -hmm. and those weren't any help either. The side effects were horrible. Um, one of the side effects of a drug that I was on called Tramadol was seizures. And uh, one day I came home from work, and f an hour later woke up on the floor not knowing what happened. My whole left side of my body was numb. The doctors here at uh, Florida Keys Memorial Hospital thought it was a stroke. They airlifted me immediately to Jackson Memorial Hospital because we don't have an MRI here. So they did the MRI test and found it was a seizure as a result of my tramadol use. Wow, so that was from a pain, a pain pill. It made you end up in the hospital, Sherry. Yes, yes, and it's a non-narcotic pain pill. It's mm -hmm. not on the same level as Vicodin. It's very commonly prescribed for many different things. Mm -hmm. A lot of antidepressants now are, just, are prescribed for um, pain because it shuts off the neurotransmitters. When I was at the hospital, they put me on a uh, drug called Elevil, and they said, we want to use this to treat the migraines. I hadn't had a migraine once I started taking it. My migraines had diminished, but the side effects of it were horrible. Mm -hmm. I was, my head felt like it was tingling, like it was going to pop off my shoulders. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's just not worth it. The side effects to me weren't worth it. Mm -hmm. So now I'm trying to do as much um, psychological training to get away from the pain as I can. Like I find things to keep myself occupied. The, the, most, the strongest thing I'll take is an Advil mm -hmm. or an Aleve, that's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And now, Sherry, something that I, I spoke with clinical psychologist Dr. Steven Ragusia about was the drug Oxycontin. And he had said how a lot of people are prescribed that drug yes. for their pain. Was that something you were prescribed at all? I was prescribed that once by a doctor on the mainland, um, one of my regular physicians. And I took the prescription and ripped it up in front of him. And I said, I'd rather deal with the pain than the problems. Mm -hmm. um, my sister was an Oxycontin abuser for years. She was in chronic pain. She was prescribed Oxycontin. And um, one thing led to another. She just couldn't get enough because the high involved with the Oxycontin was more important than killing the pain at the time. And it almost killed her. Mm -hmm. She's been clean for five years now from the Oxycontin, but still dealing with liver issues, kidney issues, stomach issues, all from the prolonged use of Oxycontin. Mm -hmm. So it, it's something that I, I understand that it does help people and that there are people that seriously need 
to be on this medication, but a lower dosage than what the doctors are giving them. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you, they ask you what your pain threshold is, is, which is one of the first things they do on a scale of one to 10, people say a nine or a 10, okay, here's 30 milligrams of Oxycontin for mm -hmm. you. You know, this is gonna help you, when they really only need five or 10. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, um, they're overdosing. I think the doctors nowadays are overdosing and not ha having heavy caseloads not having time, like, excuse me, legitimate doctors have heavy caseloads, not having enough time to really consult with the patients to see what other methods there are. It's just easier to write a prescription mm -hmm. than take the time to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Sherry, talk with me a little bit more about some of the alternatives that you've taken to pain pills. Uh, I use my TENS unit a lot. That mm -hmm. does seem to help. It's a, it's a temporary fix. But if I feel the migraines coming on, which now I'm scared to death I'm going to have a seizure because it could be up to a year that I have another one. Mm -hmm. um, but the Oxycontin, I wouldn't take because of that. I, I, that was another side effect of it. And that mm -hmm. was something that was prescribed to me afterwards. Um, I use, like I said, Advil, Aleve, Ice hot showers, I feel those migraines coming on, I run home. I go to an alternating hot to cold shower right on the mm -hmm. base of my neck where I feel it's starting. That helps. Mm -hmm. Lots of rest, eating right, eating, drinking a lot of water. Mm -hmm. That seems to help with a lot of circulation problems that I've had. Now these work for me, doesn't mean that they're gonna work for somebody else, but it's worth taking the time to invest that into yourself, mm -hmm. to find out what other treatments are possible, what I can do for my body just by eating right, mm -hmm. just by changing a few little things, a few little behavioral modifications may help you. Mm -hmm. And it's worth a shot. It's, it's worth saving your internal organs, as so to say, and your mind. Absolutely. Because those pain medications will just drive you crazy. Mm -hmm. And then the attitude, sh too, Sherry, that's something you mentioned. You really have to work on it every day. Yes. When you get out of that bed, you have to be positive and say, <laughs> I'm going to make it a good day. I'm not going to deal with this pain. I don't care how bad I feel every morning when I wake up and how hard it is for me to get moving. I wake up with the attitude, okay, I've got to do this. Mm -hmm. And I get in my mindset. I do meditation. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll lay there for about 10 minutes in the morning sometimes when I'm in a lot of pain and just focus on positive, focus on positive. This is what I have to do today, Jenna. Mm -hmm. And I get through it. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's the, that's the biggest miracle of all that I've learned. I've, I've learned within myself how to get through this. Mm -hmm. and, and that's something that a lot of people can do. Not saying mm -hmm. it's for everybody, right. but it's something that a lot of people can do. Right. There are some pains that, that you just can't help, that mm -hmm. you just can't get through, and mm -hmm. I get that. Mm -hmm. But for me, that's what worked for me. Absolutely, and people should try it because you're really gonna be doing your body a good thing by that's trying it. the alternative. That's it. All right, Sherry, you are hosting a, a talk show on 104.9, the yes, radio. Yes, I am. So let's dishing plug up that the real keys. quick. We gotta do a shameless plug for dishing <laughs> up the keys with my co-host, uh, Joe Weed, and uh, the Todd father, Todd Sittler, the voice of Sloppy Joes for many, many years with the incredible Real Roy Boy. Mm -hmm. uh, we started a show called Dishing Up the Keys. We are every Saturday from noon to four. Mm -hmm. We're in different locations every single week, so it's a lot of fun to come on out. We talk to our viewers. We have, uh, excuse me, our listeners, we get them on the air as well, get their input. Mm -hmm. We have so many eclectic people here in the Keys. It, oh, it's yeah. just, we have them in line to interview <laughs> on Saturday mornings. Great. It, it's just incredible. It's a really good show. Please listen up, noon to four on the X, 104.9 Key West. Great. We'll be there this Saturday at the Nautical Flea Market at uh, Hogfish. Wonderful. Well, I look forward to listening to you, Sherry. Thank, Thank you. you for being on this morning. I'm going to take a quick break right now. I'll be right back after these messages. Stay with me.